Welcome back to Beers Illustrated. Thanks for tuning in again. Um, second one of my videos for the year. So glad that you could be part of it. Really glad to see you here. Now, full disclosure before I air the rest of this video. I went down the coast and I was hoping to do a, a couple of interviews for an interview series that I want to show this year called Let's Catch Up for a Beer. Now, the very first one that I did happened to be with an absolute legend of a human being, Sterling Howland from Bolter. Now, it was just before news broke of, um, of the big sell. And look, it, it's just such a good chat. He's such a good bloke that independent or not, I'm going to show the video. I, I'm fiercely uh, about independent beer. Secondly, about good beer. Bolter still make good beer. They make great beer. And they will do for the next five years with the contract that they signed. So I'm gonna show the interview because it's a great chat. So um, yeah, roll the intro. So welcome back to my next video series. It's called Let's Catch Up for a Beer. And uh, I am lucky enough today to be sitting next to the one and only Handsome Elvis. Oh, thank you. Sterling <laughs> Howland. Thank you very much, mate. So we're here at Volta HQ. Um, everything's going on outside. Um, the place is absolutely buzzing because you guys just, you keep reaching new heights all the time. Um, so the, the branding of, of Bolter itself is is quite a minimalistic sort of thing. It's um it's very simple, but that's what made it stand out so much. So, how much do you think the branding uh, and and the image, and the marketing has helped Bolter excel? Yeah, mate. I think it's it's been a big part of I guess what um, made I guess Bolter unique, especially when we came into the market. Yeah. Um, you know, I think craft beer at the time, um, the aesthetics were fairly busy and. Uh, there was not, not a lot of white cans getting around, so yeah. um, you know, I like both minimalism and I love the colour white. So um, for us, it was, seemed like a natural gravitational pull to sort of set our brand up around a minimalist palette with uh, a certain set of colours. Yep. Um, in terms of its influence on the brand, I think it has created something quite iconic for us. Um, you know, we designed that um, to sit in the shelf, basically. And, create a thing that we call a white out so when you see all the cans yeah. lined up together um, they create this white band in the shelf yeah. and in a busy environment um, you would hopefully stick out and you put the lights of the fridge on and bang it pops even more yeah, um, so people are looking at this wall of beers they don't have to do but they can see their bolts are there and then they can pick their colour and yeah. um, you know it's been it's been a really important part of who we are um, you know, in terms of its influence on the brand yeah aesthetically it, it's played a big part but I think um, our brand is the sum of many parts we have a, a really good back end that runs this business yeah. um, we have an incredible product that sits inside that can and then my job really is to deliver that and to deliver that story so um, as much as the aesthetic and the branding have obviously played a massive part into creating this iconic little tinny, um, you know, there's a big back end that goes in to me doing my job as well. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it's all a bunch of things working in harmony that um, it seems to be working all right at this stage. So. Yeah. I mean, looking at your co-founders um, sort of, and the industry that you've all come from, it must have been sort of, uh, it would have been really easy to sort of just slot into that kind of ethos and that kind of um, imagery. Uh, was it a, a conscious decision to steer clear of that? Yeah, you know, I remember our first meeting and, you know, our whole thing is we wanted to be a good beer company. We yeah. didn't want to be a celebrity endorsed beer. We didn't want to be a surf company or a surf beer. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's why well, you've never seen any surfing at all in our marketing. Yeah. Um, we don't usually use the boys as the front of the brand. Um, you know, I remember Mick saying from the very early days, he goes, man, yeah, we don't want to be the front of the brand either. Um, yeah. We want to be the brand's cheerleaders, and they've been an amazing mouthpiece for Volta. Yeah. But um, in terms of uh, the actual credibility of us as a beer company, it always was about the beer and, and, and delivering on that promise of yeah. good beers for everybody. Yeah. And 
you know, I've, I look back at the last three and a half years and um, the beers that Scotty's produced and the awards that it's won and all that type of stuff. I feel like um, I'm really proud we lived up to that promise and it's, you know, it's not really known as Mick Fanning's brewery anymore. It's yeah. just known as Volta. Yep. And um, I didn't know if we'd be able to shake that stigma that quickly, but usually about after 12 months, uh, I think it was at our second Gabs. We were two months old when we went to Gabs, and the mm. second year we went down, um, no one asked us, is this McFanny? They just go, oh, have you got the XPA on? Or yeah. have you got the old brown? <laughs> Whatever it is. So, yeah. um, mate, we've always been about just being a good beer company. It was a, it was a conscious effort to stay away from um, just leveraging the boys. Um, and, you know, we wanted to respect the industry as well. And now I guess for us, that was our way of showing respect, is that we want to get here on making great beer. We don't want to get here off just using celebrity to promote the beer. Yeah, so, fair um, and I'm, I'm glad we were able to sort of achieve it so yeah, far. Yeah, awesome. Cool. So what's been your favourite of the beer so far? Man, um, I'm a drink to mood guy, a little bit yeah, like, you know, yeah. it's Me funny, too. it just, yeah. <laughs> it just got hot uh, four weeks ago, yeah. um, and I just found myself craving Captain Sensitive. Of yeah. all the beers in our range, I just had this hankering and I don't know, I just was pounding them, but I'll always go back to XPA. It's, it's, I don't know if it's the, the first child thing or whatever it is, but um, <laughs> I don't know, I do love this beer. I think this beer is, is probably a lot more complex than people give it credit for, and yep. I think for a beer to, to go to the elevation that it's gone to in terms of people's enjoyment factor and that yeah. many people drinking it for such a sustained period of time, um, is a real sign of the beer itself and the quality in which Scotty's made it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I love American hops. And, um, yeah, this is just a, a classic example. So. Cool. Yep. Um, so you, you you guys are bringing out a lot of limited release lately. Um, how's the, ba the brand evolved with all of those? Because you, your core range is fairly sort of, you know, to the letter. It, it, you've got the, the standard sort of can. You've had to... Um, sort of come up with new ways of bringing that colour in yeah. and you've done that well. How has it evolved? How's the, the mindset been about sort of coming up with those yeah. new iterations of the, the design? I think, you know, obviously when you start a business there's a lot on the line yeah. and you want to make sure that you can pay the bills and turn the lights on and pay your staff and do all that. So it's really important that we've got our core range of beers down pat, you know, yeah. and, and made beers that people want to drink regularly all the time as their go-tos and that's allowed us to keep the lights on and yeah. it's allowed us to, um, obviously it's created a lot of jobs, but also keep people in jobs. Yeah. Um, but we also knew that you just can't rest on that. You have to reinvent yourself. It's like yeah. a relationship, you know, you, you've got to invest time. You've got to, you know, uh, that surprise and delight that keeps normal human relationships alive. Um, we take the same approach to our beers. And so this limited release range of beers that we bring out, is always just about ducking and weaving and showing people something different from Volta. Yep. Um, you know, it's uh, been an amazing addition to our program. You know, we started back in the day with Black Metal Disco. Um, yes. You know, I don't think a lot of people expect us to put a black beer out as our first limited. Um, you know, that was a, a big hit. A lot of people who didn't drink stout became stout drinkers at that point in time. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and the from there, the surprise is good always. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah. um, and then the double IPA came out, and um, again, people didn't expect us to do a double IPA, and uh, we came out with that beer. And you know, that beer, when we first released it, we saw the power of, I guess, um, the trust that people had put in our brand by that stage. Yep. And so you had these people who hadn't really drunk any imperial style beers before just quaffing um, double IPA and not only quaffing and enjoying it and yeah. then seeking it out again. And, yep. um, so, you know. How many releases has that had now? Um, it's had three yeah. releases. Yep. And, um, and always really successful. Um, you, you see it everywhere, you're looking on social media, you're seeing, you know, everyone taking photos of, of those cans. Yeah, it, man, and that's it. And, and for us, that limited release, uh, release range is always about that reinvigoration. Um, it's about exploration for us in taking our community on a good beer journey. Yep. You know, and, and um, you know, we've got our own community at Volta of, of, of beer drinkers, right? And, you know, maybe before they came to us and research was trying to show us that they were probably drinking maybe Carlton Draft or Corona with some lime in it or whatever. And yeah. then they jumped over to this and they go, oh no, I, I like craft beer now. And then 
here we go. Oh, there's yep. an IPA, there's a strong parlor, there's a double IPA, have you tried the hazy? Yeah. Do you like black beers, you know, and, and away we go. So yep. it's just our way of reinvigorating our brand and, and our business and um, I love seeing the reaction our, our limited releases yeah, cause you, in the general public. And you have to keep the element of surprise going, basically. Like, you know, so a lot of breweries, or not a lot, but a few breweries have fallen short by not being as experimental or, or sort of just sticking with the core range and then hoping that that's gonna carry them through and they, they start to fall off a little bit. Um, they, they always usually find that they've gotta sort of jump into bringing out something that's a little bit special, a little bit different, try to keep yeah. people guessing. Yeah, I agree, man. And, and um, you know, there's far more experiment, experimental breweries than us um, as well, but I think for us, um, it's not about getting on that hamster wheel of new. Yeah. And having to come up with something new every week to, to wow the crowd. Yeah. We want to make sure that we do the foundations really well and then we just have this nice steady drum beat of releases that we're super proud of and um, I've found too that it's 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 worked for us. It yeah. hasn't created this anxiety in the business of, you know, what's next. Yeah, and yeah. um and it hasn't created a transient crowd as well. Yep. So our Baltic community are really loyal um, drinkers as well. Yeah. Um, whereas I think for us, if, if we were to go down that path of just doing something new and we didn't have all this other foundational beer to back it up, people just move on from like that. You know? Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a, it's been an amazing thing. Just the balance of our core range and the limiteds, and next year is going to be no different. Um, you'll see a bunch of dumb videos that yeah. I make put on the internet and. Um, and yeah, you know, and hopefully yeah. some beers people really love to drink. Yeah, the videos are always cool. Uh, they must be heaps of fun to make. Uh, what, what's been your favourite of those videos to make? I, I think I know the answer there. Yeah, <laughs> mate, it's funny. I, I think they're just self-indulgent, these videos. Yeah. I just, I find things that I find funny and yeah. I write things down. I had this chat with Dan Norris recently and I'll just write things down like um i think people who do bunny hops on scooters is, is, i think that's funny yeah and so i was like bunny hop on scooter put in an ad you know <laughs> um and it worked yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just worked <laughs> and it was a really good bunny hop and yeah. uh but then you got to get the right guy for yeah yeah man I, I like the lager ads i guess for me um you know, I, I dig all of them. Like, up until the Lager ads, it was only Bolter staff that were in those ads. Uh -huh, and yeah. um, for the Lager ads, we've got a couple of uh, comedian mates of mine to, yeah. to star in them. And um, I think people just, I hope they realise that they're taking the piss out of ourselves as yeah. much as everything else. And yep. uh, we really do play on everything absurd. Yeah, and I'm available if you ever need Yeah, great, okay, well, hey, it's good, good to know. Yeah, yeah, it's good to know. <laughs> awesome, so you guys have also got a pretty wide range of merch uh, available and I've noticed recently that's kind of evolved as well you've brought in a little bit more sort of pizzazz if you will is you've got the, the the little bits of neon coming in in some of the t-shirts and how did the like did you guys sort of realize that that range was fairly basic you wanted to to expand it evolve it man yeah I guess man I just always love merch from brands I love. Yeah. Like, ever since I was little, like your favourite record label or your favourite band or your favourite anything. Yeah. Um, just merch is cool. And yeah. I think when you're doing limited runs of stuff, it's kind of even cooler because not everyone's got the t-shirt. And yep. um, I guess our merch range for us has just always been about just creating stuff we want to wear um, that we like and think's cool and yep. that our community will dig. Um, you know, apart from just the apparel and the soft goods side of things, which is pretty staple, um, everything we've made in our range, we've made from scratch. So from our beer duffel to our beer opener to all these different things, we, we build them from the ground up. We don't just yeah. grab something off the shelf and rebadge it. Yeah, just stick it. Yeah, we want to make sure that it's deliberate and mindful and that we're proud of it. And, um, and yeah, so the whole range of see now is just um, is based around that thinking. and. And the other side of that is that it's usually there for the beer assist in your journey. So it's a little yes. beer assist. So the beer duffel, the opener, or the tinny coolers you make, or whatever they are, yep. it's always about assisting the beer journey. We don't want to get into a space where we're doing jocks and socks and all sorts of things that don't necessarily yeah. relate yep. to the beer drinker. Um, mind you, I could probably come up the way to spin a pair of beer drinking socks. But, yeah. um, yep. <laughs> but you know, it's just sort of, I don't know, man, we're just making stuff we like and we yeah. think's fun and 
Um, the beer duffel was the one that really exploded for us. Um, you know, I hadn't seen too many canvas beer bags in the market, and yep. I was like, let's do a beer duffel. Let's not get the shitty, like, plasticky shit. Like, let's get something that which is kind of sturdy really and really robust yeah that can handle it it feels nice yeah yeah yep. and looks banging you know and, and so yeah anyway we just we just like everything we just do things that we love and have a big conviction around and um it's easy for me then to market that because i don't have to bullshit i yep, can just it's it. an extension of just who you are yeah, and what if you've got the right product it's not hard to to tell people about it and tell people how much you love it yeah. because you generally yeah, that's right. That's yeah. it. It's a, it's a, there's no rocket science in it. It's just a real simple formula. And yep. what do we like? Let's make it. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. hopefully yeah. Because we're normal blokes. Like, other yeah. people might like it too. You know? Yeah. So yeah. that's our thinking. Awesome, mate. Well, um, that brings to an end um, my first uh, video in this new series. Um, thank you very much, mate. Oh, thanks, Craig. And uh, look, us. if you're down on the Gold Coast, make sure you pop into the tap room here at Bolter in Corumban. Uh, it's an amazing little space. Uh, Saturday or Sunday afternoon, it goes off. Uh, make sure that you yeah, head along, uh, head over to my Instagram, Facebook, and the YouTube. So wherever you're watching this from, go over to the other ones. And, and give them likes and, and clicks and all those sorts of stuff that comes along with social media because that all helps me out. And um, yeah, make sure you buy Bolter beers because they're really awesome. So cheers. Cheers, thanks a lot. Beers Illustrated for life. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha.